How's it going everybody? It's Rosie here for Astrophotography. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to edit a bicolor image in Photoshop using my data of the Tulip Nebula captured during this Astrophotography Challenge with Tim from Astro Addict. So go ahead down to the description below to download the data. And while you're down there, if you want more reviews, how-tos and vlogs for all things Astrophotography, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss an upload. I'll see you in a minute at the computer. Okay, so now that you've opened the images into Photoshop, you're gonna see something like this. And that is because Astro Pixel Processor has applied an automatic stretch to these images. I asked it to do this just to speed this tutorial up a bit because I already have an image processing tutorial. So if you're not sure how you'd get to this kind of stage, then check the description below. There's a processing tutorial in there first. Go watch that. And when you're familiar with that, you can come back to this one. Right, so I'm gonna make another image first to begin with. And to do that, I'm, I want the image to have these same dimensions. So I'm gonna select the entire canvas. I'm gonna press Control C then. So that's Control A and Control C. Then I'm gonna to go to new. Make sure the color mode is RGB color. Now, bicolor images are traditionally HOO, hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen. And that corresponds one-to-one -one with RGB. So you would put hydrogen, so come down to your channels here. You'd put hydrogen alpha into the red channel and you will put oxygen into the green and the blue channels. And then you will have an image like that. Where are my layers? There. From here, the first thing I want to do is crop because we have some stacking artifacts up in the corners. So if you hold Alt and press into the, into the ruler at the top, you can make these guidelines appear. I'm going to put guidelines there and there and then the same down the side you can either press on that ruler there or you can bring one up here and then let go of alt and this just makes a bit more of an accurate selection rather than just using a marquee tool and thinking you know hoping for the best so your marquee tool now will snap to those guidelines then you can go to image and crop duplicate the background layer that's my own little thing that i like to do I'm now going to make a star mask. So I'm going to go to select color range, highlights. I go a little bit faster here because I've covered these, these steps already in my other tutorial. But you know, if I go too fast and first of all, I'm sorry, but uh, I can always rewind the video. So that was about, ooh, what was that actually? It was about 130 range, 190 range with 30% fuzziness. And that is my star mask. You can, you can spend more time to really refine this mask, but I'm just gonna go fast for the sake of tutorial. Control C and Control V to paste that into place. This is now the star mask layer. Control and click that thumbnail. That reselects everything because we want to fill this. We want to paint all these with black. At least that's something I like to do. Make sure your paintbrush is at 100, like full flow and full opacity. I enjoy painting this black. And that is your star mask. So go back to the background layer. We are now ready to begin our actual editing. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually apply that star mask. So I'm going to control click that star mask and with, I'm going to call that layer first adjustments. So control click the star mask and then select your first adjustments layer, go to layer, layer mask and hide selection. Click the actual thumbnail there and then we want to make a levels adjustment layer. I'm gonna bring the white point down to about 180 to raise, just raise the brightness of this. Now you're gonna notice something. The star, the layer, the, the, the star mask is not working because we haven't set this as an adjustment layer. So we're gonna make this to be a clipping layer, sorry. And that way it'll only affect what's below it. So it's going below the mask. 
Next up is not a group. Next up will be a curves adjustment layer as a clipping mask. And I want to just raise it up gently here. That raises the shadows up a touch. And now we use adjustment layers for this reason. This is all over the place, like it's too bright now. But rather than having to do like go up here and do another adjustment layer, like another levels adjustment, we can actually just double click this point here and this brings the layer adjustment back up. And we can just drop our black point down to about 18. And I'm happy with that now. So I'm gonna use Control Shift Alt N plus E to stamp this layer. I'm going to put this layer into its group And we're going to call that. Now, as mentioned already, because Astro Pixel Processor has already basically done most of the editing for me, um, I'm just going to go straight now into my noise reduction and my star reduction layers, starting with noise reduction. And to do this, I'm going to use my best friend, which is the camera raw filter, which can be found in the filter camera raw. So we're going to zoom in here before and after. Under the third tab, you'll see the noise reduction luminance layers. Now, this was only three hours of narrowband data with a one-shot color camera through the Altair tri-band filter. That has been reviewed. The filter's been reviewed. You can find it in the top right-hand corner. This was part. This was the image taken with the imaging challenge set by Astro Addict, and you can find that video in the description below. So I'm going to add about 55 luminance of noise reduction with about 33 color reduction. And you can see the differences before and after. I'm going to apply that noise reduction. I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to call this the star reduction layer. And if you watch the other tutorial, you'll know how I do my star reduction. We're going to go to select color range highlights because the stars are in the highlights. I'm going to say anything that's brighter than say 170 and a fuzziness of 20%. Uh, I don't want that. So you could, you could go manually fix that, but because I'm trying to film a tutorial here, I'm actually going to raise my threshold. Oops. Damn, that's really bright. Okay. Gonna to go to 210. All right, we'll deal with that. Select, modify, I'm going to expand that selection by only one pixel. And then I'm gonna to go to the filter, other, and minimum. Uh, the radius is going to be about one. I would do 1.5, but my PC still isn't letting me do it. I think I need to update like uh, Photoshop. So you can see the difference is made now. So it's took took like the edge off of these stars, right? It's helped make them a little bit dimmer. But if that's not to your taste, you can either ignore this step or you can change the opacity of it. I'm going to make this 66%. So it's kind of best of both worlds. And I will now stamp a new layer and call this SR and NR. Right, so the main meat and potato, so to speak, of this tutorial is adding the blue into this. Now, I use the term adding the blue. I'm not actually adding blue. I'm drawing the blue out, let's say. And so the first thing I'm actually going to do is desaturate this layer a touch. I'm going to go to image adjustments and hue saturation and bring this down by negative 30. And desaturating this helps the color picker work a bit better as well as just adds a better base for my next few edits stay on the colors so we're going to go to select color range sampled colors this time around and we want to sample the core of the tulip nebula where we want the blue to be basically I'm going to raise that fuzziness a bit and that's going to be our selection i'm now going to go to select modify and feather i feather this by 10 Control, copy, and paste. Now we are just editing the core of the Tulip Nebula like this. 
and I'm going to actually apply our layer mask, our star mask to this layer. So control click the star mask thumbnail, layer, layer mask, hide selection on the add blue layer. So call this add blue layer. You can actually call this add blue one because there's gonna be two. This is where it gets complicated. So I'm gonna try and be as clear as I can. With the add blue one layer, we are going to go to adjustment layer, levels, clipping mask. Now remember what I said about the clipping mask. If we just added the blue here, it's adding blue to the entire image. But if we add a clipping mask, it only adds blue to the selection. So I want to put the blue channel's white point down to about 140. And then I'm gonna to go to my red channel. I'm gonna bring the red channel's black point to about, uh, say about 50. I'm now gonna put a selective color clipping mask on this. And in the red channel, I'm gonna drop under absolute. I'm gonna drop the cyans to minus 50. I'm gonna drop the magentas to minus 50. I'm gonna drop the yellows to minus 25. So we've desaturated the core a bit more and then we've made it more blue. Stamp that and call this layer add blue two. Under add blue two, we're gonna make another selective color layer and under the blue channel this time, we want to raise the cyans 40 and the magentas by about 10 or maybe a bit more. Depends on how much blue you want to put in this. You can always try another levels. Clipping mask. Remember that always make them clipping masks. I haven't made that a clipping mask. Now nah, we'll leave that as it is. Okay, so. This is where it really gets complicated. We want to erase everything in this picture on add blue two. We want to erase everything that we don't want to be as blue, right? Because this is too blue. We're going to take our eraser tool, but if we start erasing add blue two, add blue one is going to show through, right? So hide add blue layer one, and then on add blue two, make sure your, your brush, your erase is set right. Erase everything that you don't want to have this color on it. Use different size erasers if you need to. Like I want the petals to be red. I don't want the blue to be that much into space. And now I'm going to like lower my flow change my opacity just so I can start blending this in a bit. Mm, there you go. Right. We had to hide the first layer because like I said, first of all, it's too blue and it's gonna, you won't be able to see what you're doing. Secondly is also because we're gonna do, a the thing is called stamp visible. So if the blue layer was, if add blue one was on show, you'd be actually stamping a blue picture. But having it set like this, when you stamp visible, you're actually gonna stamp that with the little blue core. I'm gonna put these into their own little folder. Oh, that was an accident. Add blue. 
With this one, I'm gonna raise, I wanna now raise the overall image brightness a touch and add a little bit more of a blue cast to this entire photo. So I'm gonna call this brightness and blues. And to do these steps, I'm going to make a curves adjustment layer as a clipping mask, of course. Raise the brightness just a touch. And then make a levels adjustment layer clipping mask. Go into the green channel and bring the greens down a bit. Maybe we'll do a 225. As you can see, it's adding a green tint to this. So now we're going to bring the blues down as well to 225. Just to balance that back out. Mm. No, I'm thinking 235 maybe. It's a bit too blue. Let's go back to 225, then go back to the RGB layer and change your black point. Oh, there we go. That's that's where it is. That's where I want it to be. I'm happy with how that's looking so far. So I'm going to stamp another layer. I'm going to put these into their own little folder as well. Blue and brightness. Now I'm going to address the reds because I feel like the reds are running away a bit. We're, we're losing them. So I'm going to do a select color range. And we're going to sample the reds. We're going to feather the reds. And we're going to copy and paste the reds. Add the star mask. I actually think I might expand this selection out a bit. So add your add your layer mask for your star mask, hide selection. That's on the wrong fold, that's on the wrong one. Make sure you add the layer mask to the correct layer, which is layer two in this right in the case. Hide selection. Okay, to this one, I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer as a clipping mask. And I'm going to add some contrast to this layer. So that's your S curve that you see all over the place. That's the contrast curve. You bring the dark areas down, you raise the brighter areas up of the image. It adds contrast to an image. And next up, I'm now going to add a vibrance adjustment layer. So vibrance is where a lot of magic happens. I'm going to raise the vibrance to mm, let's say about 60 and I'm going to raise the saturation to 50. And the lovely thing about this is that looks terrible, but we can always just reduce the opacity of that layer. I like that. I think that looking that's looking good. So again, as always, we're going to stamp another layer. Add red is what I'm going to call that layer. Now, at this point, if you feel like the blue is too harsh or, or something along those lines, you can always make uh, another selective color adjustment layer. And with relative selected this time, you can actually drop the cyans in the blue channel a bit. and drop the magenta as well. Yeah, I'd say about there. And if you want to make the reds pop a bit more, you can always go to the red channel and drop the cyan's in the red. Like that. That's what we had. That's what we've got. Oh, of course. Be sure to add it as a clipping mask. So the blues are a bit more softer, the reds are a bit more punchier again. We are nearly there. So I'm going to do two more steps. The first of all, I'm going to go into Camera Raw again. So we're going to stamp another layer. Go into Camera Raw. And what I want to do in Camera Raw 
is I'm going to actually add a bit of contrast in Camera Raw. Yeah, drop the highlights a touch just to stop things blowing out. Mm, shadows. Yeah, dim that a bit. Mm, maybe with the whites a bit. But mainly I'm also here for the noise reduction. So I'm going to do another iteration of noise reduction. It's about 55 luminance, about 35 color. You can look at the before and after again. It's a lot more smoother. Bash. And I'm practically happy with that. I'm going to show you one more thing and that's going to be the the, uh, the contrast I like to do. So I'm going to call this the contrast layer. I'm going to go in again. I think if you watch the other one, you, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it a very aggressive contrast curve. And then I'm going to also go into camera raw filter. I'm going to add a lot of clarity to this. <laughs> and then I'm going to actually add a layer mask. So we're going to go to layer, layer mask and hide all. Select the layer mask. So this is now where we get to pick exactly where we want things. Select your pen, your uh, paintbrush. Lower it down. Make sure you've got white paint selected. And then where you want that high contrast to be, paint onto that layer mask. So that paintbrush is a bit too thick for me. What did I just press? That's the pen tool. So we're just going to paint in here everywhere. I want that, that higher contrast to be, including up on these stems here. The stigma? The stigmata? Stigma. I'm going to reduce the flow as well and the opacity, like to down to 75 or something. This is to then start blending this out a bit. I'm going to put some over here and maybe some over here. Yeah. Now I'm going to set this as the multiply, uh, multiply mode and I'm going to change this opacity down to 15. I like that. Or you could always just keep it as the normal blend mode and change this opacity that way. Either way, whichever one works for you. And if you ever want to remove some of that, then you just fill it in with black paint. From here, I'd call this about done now, but you could always just do another contrast. Uh, you like, you could always go back into the camera raw feature, add more con contra contrast or vibrance or things like that. Like you could always add a bit more vibrance again, but I'm not going to do that. That's up to you if you want to do that. I'm rather happy with this. So obviously it's not the neatest job on my part because I'm trying to do it quickly for a tutorial, but you can obviously spend a lot more time painting exactly the right places in, doing all these steps to get the right contra can contrast. Wow, I've been talking too long today and really fine tuning it. So that is the end of the tutorial. But before you click off, if you enjoyed this, be sure to leave me a comment. If you've got any, any questions about it, if you got stuck at all, then just drop a comment about it. And if you share this on social media, give me a tag in it because I really want to see what you can do with, with this tutorial. Now you can click off. Hope you have a good day. Clear skies. Keep looking up and keep them cameras clicking. See you later. Bye-bye.